Africa, 1975. Fresh hunting grounds for the Cold War superpowers. As Portuguese troops pulled out of Angola, three groups jostled for power. America's fears were aroused. The popular movement for the liberation of Angola, the MPLA, the largest group, was left-wing. Based in and around the capital, Luanda, its multi-ethnic membership was led by Augustinho Neto and Lucio Lara. In the 1960s, it had received training from Cuba and arms from Moscow. The National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, led by Jonas Sevimbi, was based in the south of Angola. A charismatic leader, Savimbi decided that American backing was the key to power. At Alvor in Portugal, the three rival groups got together. They agreed on arrangements for independence and elections. America was now backing two of the three independence movements. Washington ruled out intervention in Angola with American troops. Instead, it turned, secretly, to South Africa. In Luanda, the MPLA was staging parades. In the countryside, it was losing control. Keen to show leadership in the developing world, Cuba sent 400 military instructors to Luanda. A bigger challenge now faced the MPLA. In October 1975, South African troops had invaded Angola. From their bases in Namibia, they had joined forces with UNITA. Just two days before independence, thousands of Cuban combat troops began arriving in Luanda. Moscow began shipping hundreds of tons of arms, tanks and missiles direct to Luanda. Augustinho Neto greets the Soviet ambassador. The MPLA was recognized as Angola's government by the Soviet Union, Cuba and most of Africa. Its fight against South African troops gave the MPLA political credibility. South of Luanda, the Cubans prepared to end the South African advance. There were roads going to the north, roads going to the center. The Cubans were ready, waiting. The South Africans had penetrated over a thousand kilometers. They were close to Luanda. 